This is a crochet tutorial for a rainbow ripple baby blanket, also known as chevron or zigzag. The link to the free pattern is in the description of this video. I use double knit wool from West Yorkshire Spinners called Color Lab, which is 100% natural wool, locally reared, sheared, and spun here in the UK. It comes in an array of beautiful colors such as harbor blue, thistle purple, very berry, cerise pink, aqua, deep teal, lime, citrus yellow, zesty orange, and crimson red. Of course, you can use any yarn you like. There are a number of versions on how to make the ripple stitch. This is my favorite. The crochet pattern is in US terms. For the most part, it consists of double crochet stitches. The number four seems to be the magic number for this pattern. There are four double crochet stitches followed by four stitches to increase, another four double crochet, and then decreasing stitches in four spaces. Once you understand how to make one ripple, then you simply carry on and repeat the ripple pattern. Each color band consists of two rows of the ripple pattern. You will need the following materials. Two crochet hooks, a pair of scissors, and your choice of yarn in various colors. For the most part, I used a 4mm crochet hook, or size G. To start the baby blanket, I use a larger hook size of 5mm, or size H. We start off with a slip knot. I prefer to make my slip knot as if I'm making a magic circle. For an in-depth look at how to make a slip knot or any of the other crochet stitches, I've included a video link in the description. With a larger hook, make chains of multiples of 14 plus 1. For my baby blanket, I figured I need 9 ripples, which means I need to chain 127 times. For our sample, let's go for two ripples, which means we need 29 chains. Skip one chain and make a single crochet stitch for the rest of the 28 chains. And this makes 28 single crochet stitches. Using a smaller hook, for my case I use 4 millimeters. We chain 3, 1, 2, 3. Turn our work and we work a double crochet in the first stitch. And then we work double crochet stitches in the next four stitches. One, two, three, and four. Then we're going to decrease the stitches with a double crochet two together. We start off as if we're working a double crochet in the first stitch. But we stop when we have two loops on our hook. Then we continue by starting a double crochet in the second stitch. Then we stop when we have three loops on our hook. We finish this off by yarning over and drawing through all these three loops on our hook. Then we do this decrease again in the next two, two stitches. So all in all, we're decreasing across four stitches. We work another four double crochet stitches. One, two, three, and four. Here we start to increase by working two double crochet stitches in each space for the next two stitches. So here's our first, 
increase and then we do this a second time first and second double crochet stitch so we have four stitches here that we increased and then we work another four double crochet stitches we follow this up by decreasing using double crochet two together here's our first decrease and our second decrease double crochet two together then we work double crochet in the next four stitches one two three and four then we work two double crochet stitches in the last stitch so here's our first double crochet stitch and our second double crochet stitch in the same space so this is the first row of our ripple for our sample and it consists of two ripples then we continue by chaining three turning our work and working a double crochet stitch in the first stitch And this looks like two double crochet stitches in the same space and then we work a double crochet stitch in the next four stitches so this is one two three and four And then we decrease by using double crochet two together twice in the next four stitches. So here's our first decrease. And our second decrease. Which starts off by working a double crochet in the first stitch. Then we stop when we have two loops on our hook. Then we continue by starting a double crochet in the second stitch. Then we have three loops on the hook. We finish this off by yarning over and drawing through the three loops. Follow that up by four double crochet stitches. Here's our first one. Two. Three. Four. then we increase by working two double crochet stitches in the next two spaces here's our first increase and our second increase working two double crochet stitches in the same space then four double crochet stitches one two three and four and then we decrease again working double crochet two together twice in the next four stitches here's our first decrease 
and here's our second decrease or DC two together then four double crochet stitches this is one two three and four and then we work two double crochet stitches in the last stitch this last stitch is actually the top of the chain three start of the previous row we make one last chain to secure the yarn as we're going to change the color of the yarn for our next row then we cut the yarn this last stitch will be the first stitch when we turn our work we take our second color yarn so again you can use any yarn color you want, any brand you want. This is just my personal preference. We insert your hook on the first stitch. And then we make a slip stitch with this new yarn by drawing this new color through this first stitch. And then we chain three. You work a double crochet stitch in the same space as a chain three. So this will look like two double crochet stitch in the same space. And then double crochet stitches in the next four spaces. So one, two, three, and four. And then we decrease by working double crochet two together twice in the next four stitches. So here's our first decrease. And our second decrease. And then we do four double crochet stitches. So our second one, our third one, and our fourth. And then we increase by working two double crochet stitches in the same stitch. And then we work another four double crochet stitches in the next four spaces. Then we decrease again twice. DC two together. Here's our first one and our second one. Four double crochet stitches. One two, three, and four. Then on our last stitch, we're going to be working two double crochet stitches. Here's the second one. Chain three. Then we turn our work. Then we repeat this ripple pattern in the next row to make the second row for this new color.
So at the end of this row, we make a final chain to secure before cutting the yarn. So here we have our sample with two colors, both color bands consisting of two rows, and each row consisting of two ripples. Here I have a baby blanket I've been working on, which I've used to color lab yarn to approximate the rainbow colors. For my blanket, which is 30 inches across and 40 inches of length, I have nine ripples per row, and I use 10 colors of the color lab range. Make sure you measure the initial rows of your test piece for you to ascertain how many ripples you need for your own baby blanket. To check and see the pattern alignment, here we have four double crochet stitches. Looking at the next row, these should align with the four double crochet stitches in the adjacent row. This is followed by two sets of double crochet two together followed by another four double crochet stitches and two sets of increase in double crochet and then another four double crochet stitches and so on and so forth. So once you've mastered how to make one ripple, then you simply carry on and repeat the ripple pattern for each row. Then, just follow the ripple pattern for each row, changing the colors in every two rows. Let's review the ripple pattern. Here's my baby blanket, where I need to change yarn for the next color band. I insert my hook in the first stitch and slip stitch with a new yarn. So, from harbor blue, I want to change it to aqua. So Here's my new color. chain three double crochet stitch in the same stitch now notice where I've positioned the loose ends so I put it right at the top of the previous row so while I work four double crochet stitches I will keep this loose yarn in this position to hide them. So here's my first double crochet stitch, followed by three more. This is one way of weaving in ends without having to weave in anything. There are other ways of weaving in ends. This is my preferred way. So after this, we're going to decrease by working double crochet two together twice in the next four stitches. So here's our first decrease and our second decrease. Then another four double crochet stitches. And then we increase by working two double crochet stitches in the next two stitches. That's the first increase and second increase. And then we work another four double crochet stitches and so on and so forth. So the pattern goes, we have an initial increase in one space and then we work four double crochet stitches as normal. And then we decrease across four spaces and then we 
work another four simple double crochet stitches and we increase by using two double crochet stitches in the next two st spaces we work another four double crochet stitches and it repeats until we get to the end the last space we put in two double crochet stitches which is actually an increase we repeat this pattern for a second row for this yarn and we keep adding bands of different color yarn until we've reached we've reached the desired length for your baby blanket that's it thanks for watching and see you next time